Hello, and welcome to the Radiant Mission Podcast. My name is Rebecca Toomey, and we are on a mission to encourage and inspire you as you're navigating through your life and with your relationship with Christ. We are currently in a series on the female body where we're discussing birth control, and we have a lovely guest here today to share her experience and her story with birth control. Her name is Andrea Riofrio Alford, and she is a nutritionist and fitness coach focusing on pre and post natal. You can find her on Instagram by searching her name at Andrea underscore Rio R I R I O F R I O underscore Halford H A L F O R D. Andrea, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm so excited. We were just talking before we started recording about how this is actually the first time you and I have seen each other face to face in a conversation. We became friends through Instagram, I think through the podcast, actually. Yeah. I think it was before the podcast, even. Okay. It was it yeah. from the Healing Birth, the Healing Birth podcast? Yes, maybe? I think so. Yeah. It seems like a lifetime ago. It's been years, and now you and I talk almost every day. And yeah. just through chat and send each other voice mm -hmm. memos. So it's so amazing to get to see you face to face. Thank you for joining me. I'm I'm so excited to just have you. You are such a blessing in my life. So thank you for being open. No, likewise, you having such a blessing in our lives, like not just mine, but Josh's too, you know, with your advice and all your the knowledge you share. Oh, thank you. You know, that's the mission here. We just want to share what I've experienced, what Rachel has experienced. And now even my husband, you know, he's come on and actually oh, yeah. I'm, ex I'm excited. He's going to be sharing his faith story soon, which is kind of cool. So really cool. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll, we'll stay, stay tuned for that one. Cause that'll be a good one, but I know this is kind of a heavy topic and I want to give kind of some background info as we get into your story of using hormonal, non-hormonal birth control, whatever the case might be. But we mentioned in last week's intro episode on this topic that our goal here is to have an open discussion about the topic of birth control. This is not medical advice. These are our real life stories that we are sharing on this podcast. We are pro-medical freedom on this podcast, which means that we're not here to tell you what to do. I know sometimes our opinions come out as we're speaking, but at the end of the day, it is about informed consent and you as a listener, understanding and knowing what your options are, understanding products and being informed on what it is that you are doing or taking or whatever the case may, might be. So we're informing you on the actual real life stories of women who have interacted with pharmaceutical birth control. And if you're tuning in for the first time, please listen back to that last episode where we discuss alternatives to pharmaceutical birth control, because there is a, that's the big thing. Whenever we talk about birth control is people are like, well, there's not, there's no other option, but to do this, but there are other options. So listen back so you can hear more about those options. Cause believe it or not, there are, in fact, God designed the female body on a fairly predictable clock. If I might say so myself, where we can track <laughs> the phases of our cycle. And he also created plants and animals that live on this earth. And he gave us food and for medicine. So those that suffer from heavy periods, endometriosis, PCOS, ovarian issues, so on, birth control and hysterectomies are not your only option. Again, not medical advice, but listen back to that episode and we'll talk more where we talk more about that. The Lord has many ways of healing our bodies, but it's also worth noting that we as human beings here on this earth, having this human experience, we're forged in the fire. The Lord doesn't promise us a life that's free from pain, suffering, worry, or even good health. In fact, in our, our it's really in our darkest moments where we meet and find the Lord. And I know that that has been true for me. I have my own experience with birth control, my own experience with birth, and those things are what led me to even create this podcast and talk about these things. So if I hadn't gone through those dark moments, I probably wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. 
So this is why we're talking about pharmaceutical birth control. The marketing for these products is deceptive. And in many ways, these products are disconnecting us from our bodies and arguably even the Lord himself. OBs and OBGYNs, they tell us that these products are safe. We're given a package that has a long list of side effects on that insert. But those side effects are entirely played down. And I have yet to encounter an OB personally that has actually explained what happens to our natural hormones when we use pharmaceutical birth control. So Andrea, I know you've had quite the experience yourself in this area and thank you for being willing and open to talk about it. When were you first introduced to birth control and what was your experience? Tell us more about your story. So, um, well, I'm originally from Ecuador. So Ecuador is a very Catholic country. So growing up as a female, I, my, my family was very conservative, I would say. So like sex and birth control was never like spoken of. Right. But then mm -hmm. we moved to the States and, uh, for some reason, I, I think I probably went to the doctor and around 16, 17 years old, I was put on birth control. And um, it was mostly because just, <clears throat> just in case, um, I guess I'll get pregnant, but I wasn't like sexually active back then. Mm -hmm. uh, then around 18 years old, uh, they, I started getting migraines. So they, uh, the doctor was like, let's put you on a different type of birth control to control your migraines. So I feel like I pretty much stayed on it because it was expected and it's something that you were supposed to do as a young female, right? A part mm -hmm. of your OB care. Um, mm -hmm. my Did you, were you put really, on a pill back back then? Was it the pill or a, a, one yes. of the many? <laughs> Okay. Yes, one of the many pills, and then they changed it like to a low estrogen one, I believe it was, because of migraines. I, I started getting very bad migraines. Mm -hmm. the, I'm talking about like migraines that lasted three days every week. Mm -hmm. So most of the month I was living with migraines. It was terrible. Wow. And, you know, I, I had my eyes tested to see if I had like any, any vision issues. I started wearing glasses. I went to see a neurologist, they did MRIs and things like that, but they were like, they're hormonal, like my grandmother had them and my uh, my, mo my mom had migraines, my sisters had migraines. So they were like, the birth control will help. Interesting. So I, w I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, then um, I guess I just stayed in it because it was expected and and uh, I did, you know, had a few relationships um, and I guess I was taking it just in case to prevent mm -hmm. pregnancy. Never really cared about learning. I knew I was supposed to get my period every month. You know, I didn't know the effects of the hormones in my body and what it was really doing. Then mm -hmm. I met my husband in 2015 stayed on it, but I was the psycho girlfriend, you know, sometimes <laughs> like out of nowhere, I was like, I had anxiety I was uh like texting him constantly out of nowhere like at least terrible anxiety and um I can relate <laughs> yeah <laughs> like out of nowhere like this anxiety will hit me out of nowhere and I will text him and and he will say things like <laughs> that I was going crazy and stuff <laughs> like that and I couldn't connect it with what what it was you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. So but you had this, it sounds like you had an innate feeling that that wasn't who you were. That wasn't yes. you, that there was, you were having that experience and you were feeling an anxious and maybe mistrust or whatever it might have been in that moment. But there was part of you that knew the way that your body was feeling internally wasn't you. Is that, is that yes. correct? Okay. Yeah, so I, I've always had an interest in fitness and nutrition. So I started lifting more uh, pow uh, for power lifting. And I control my nutrition even more with like my macros, protein, carbs, fat, and all that. And I still wasn't seeing the results I wanted to see with my body composition. Mm -hmm. And the more you dial into your nutrition, the more you know how you're feeling after you eat certain things, after mm -hmm. you eat a higher carb meal and things like that. So you get more in tune with your body, the more you dive into nutrition and fitness. 
And I started seeing that I wasn't seeing the results besides being the psycho girlfriend <laughs> that I wanted to see with like dialing my nutrition, like almost a hundred percent. Um, and I didn't understand it. So I started like checking things off. Like I said, I said, I was, I was vegetarian for a time. I was vegan for a time, you know, I was cutting out red meat, doing all these things, thinking it was the food I was eating Mm -hmm. more than what I was putting into my body like you know a pill that it it was like normal it was part of what I was you get up you take the pill and you continue with your day it's like such a small part of your day that you don't even attribute anything to it we don't think about how something as small as that teeny tiny little pill (laughs) changes all of our hormones and how our hormones naturally occur and balance in our bodies Cause they tell us like, oh, this just balances your hormones or this just, it's just a little bit of hormones to help with not getting pregnant, but we're not told the significance of using an artificial, a hormone that's from artificial sources Mm -hmm. to then change the composition of our own internal hormones. So putting us in a perhaps state of high estrogen or Mm -hmm. high progesterone, like it, it, it's manipulating our hormones, but you're right. We don't think about it. It's a tiny little yeah. pill. What's it going to, what's it really doing? Oh, we're just not going to get pregnant. It's magic. <laughs> yes. It's kind of like a big deal, but it's not because it is a big deal because you're not going to get pregnant, which is the fear, right? Like I'm dating. I don't want to get pregnant or I'm married, but I don't want to get pregnant. And mm-hmm. yet, so I'm going to take the pill, but it's also such a small part of my day, but it's a big decision at the same time right mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. to me was a point that I had to start pointing things out like like uh and I'm sure this happened with you when you were going through your allergies that I, we I've heard you talk about it like you start really looking at the details you're doing everything else and still not seeing the results you want so yes that's what it came down to to what led me to say the birth control and it always felt weird like hello I'm taking this or where I, when I will talk to other uh, girls that I work with that they had like the, the one that you put in your arm you know the oh implant implant on I think it's imp- called oh yes and, yes. I'm, and they, they haven't had a period in years and things like that in in my nutrition and fitness background it didn't feel right I'm like I wouldn't want to do that <laughs> like yeah. I, I no periods are not fun for most women but I don't want to get to that point where I don't get a period at all. That doesn't feel normal. Yeah. So um, then we got married 2017. I was still on the pill. 2018, uh, I, I guess Josh kept complaining. I was still going psycho at times. <laughs> and then I, was see, I wasn't seeing the results I wanted with my body composition. I felt bloated. I felt I uh, had anxiety, uh, didn't have the, the, I didn't, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel mm-hmm. like everything that I was doing with my nutrition and training and sleep wasn't matching the way I wanted to feel and the way I wanted to look. Yeah. And so I switched from the pill to the uh, Mirena. Yes. To the is, Mirena uh, IUD, which is the yeah, plastic the IUD. IUD for those wondering. And we did talk about that last episode. So yeah. If you need a background on Morena, <laughs> tune back in. Go ahead, but go ahead, yeah. Supposedly, it was the best option for me. I have never had children, um, and she did say it was going to be a little painful. <laughs> and uh, yes, so the doctors are w- interesting when they talk about it was oh, a we're going to give doctor. you an IUD. We have the Morena, the plastic one, and it's smaller. If you haven't had a baby, we could fit it in there easier. But if you've already had kids, the copper one, I remember that talk. Oh, yeah. It sounds like you <laughs> had the same talk as I, I did. <laughs> right? It's like scarred into my brain. How was the insertion for you? Because it was extremely painful for me. It was terrible. It was so bad. Uh, and I do believe I have, I don't believe I have that high pain tolerance. I'm still yet to. Uh, find that out soon maybe <laughs> and um, but it was terrible it was so bad and I feel like I should have had Josh next to me or somebody a support person and more of uh, uh, what to expect you know I don't I don't believe I am a, a 
and I don't want to say somebody that experiences pain at a higher level is a weak person, but I was used to like lifting heavy loads, like putting my body through a lot of stress at that time. Um, and I worked out hard. I have worked two jobs. Like it, I'm not, I don't believe like I'm super mentally weak and that was super painful. Um, and she did say it was a smaller one and it wasn't, it was gonna feel like a pinch. It didn't feel like a pinch. I felt like um, I almost passed out. It was a really negative experience. Wow. Yeah. I bet. So they take this plastic piece that ha- is wrapped with Lord knows what, and yes. it's folded down when they put it in. So it kind of looks almost like a small pencil or it's not it, that's not what it looks like it doesn't look like a pencil I will have mm-hmm. to share pictures of what it actually looks like yeah but it's the little arms on it are closed when they insert it but they mm-hmm. stick it through our cervix so it goes through the vaginal canal through the cervix into the uterus where then those once it gets into the uterus those arms pop open and then they kind of even pull it down a little bit to get it to yeah. kind of stay so it doesn't float mm-hmm. around in there And then there Mm -hmm. are strings that come out the bottom. So they come out through the cervix, through the vaginal canal, and then they Mm -hmm. trim the strings to a different length. And what they say is they'll trim the strings. There's two of them next to each other, and it's exactly like fishing wire. So for anyone that's wondering, what are these strings made out of? That's what it feels like, fishing wire. And then they, uh, what's it called? They take the strings and they swoop it there's this little piece of our bodies right underneath our cervix where they can swoop it so that this, the end of the string isn't pointing down. Because you have to mm-hmm. also think about this. Men and women, when we are making love the way that God has intended us, <laughs> the man's, I don't know how graphic we want to be on this podcast, right? <laughs> the, the man, when he is going inside of that vaginal canal, it is going to the point where it can touch the end of these strings. So if you think mm-hmm. about it, if they cut it too short and all that's sticking out from the cervix is a little bit of those strings, hypothetically, the end of a man's penis is going to poke right into those strings. So what they say that they want to do is leave them a little longer and swoop them around. But now think about it. The man's penis can still touch the end of where that swoop is. It's just that mm-hmm. it's touching the looped part instead of the end of it. I don't know if uh, those listening, if this makes any sense, but it probably sounds crazy to someone who has never had an IUD too. Like that doesn't, that does not sound good. But when you are sitting across the desk or in a room with an OBGYN and they tell you this, it doesn't seem as extreme as talking about it right now, right? Like they just like, oh, well, we just put this thing in here and it's going to prevent pregnancy and- and that's it. But when we really think about it, it's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I like to have something sitting there for who knows how long. And yeah. to me, they made it sound like, oh, you haven't had babies yet. So this is the best option for you because I guess it's the smaller one, I believe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why they suggest that you, you have that if you, but they, she did say it's going to be more painful than putting it in a female that has had babies before. Mm -hmm. And, but I did not expect it to be that terrible. Yeah. My OB (laughs) said to me, oh, I have this. That was kind of how she sold it to me. It's like, oh, I have Marina. So, you know, it's fine for you. You haven't had any, any same thing. You haven't had any babies yet. So it's not going to be so bad. So you had Marina placed and then (laughs) what happened after that? So I had it honestly for three weeks. That was all, like maybe three to four weeks. And immediately it didn't feel right uh, because obviously the pain, they said I will have a little bit of cramping and all that. But the pain didn't go away. Not the intense pain of the insertion, but the constant cramping. And the weirdest thing was when I was doing normal life stuff, for example, putting the clothes in the dryer, I will bend over and I will feel something poking on my back from inside. Oh. Like if something was like really, really poking, it was so painful. And I like putting stuff in the laundry basket, in the laundry basket or the dryer, stuff that you don't even think about, right? 
you, I will bend over and feel something poking. Then wow. doing a deadlift, I will feel an intense pain, uh, po something poking me. And I called them and they were like, that's normal. Just wait a few more weeks, just give it time. But I was in pain every single day for doing random things, bending over, grabbing stuff, and it didn't feel right. But they tell you, wait a little bit, wait a little bit. So Josh was, my husband was like, that is not okay. Like you shouldn't feel that way. You got this to feel like better and to make it more convenient of not having to take the pill and see if it made you feel better with your results. And you cannot even work out without pain or even when you do the laundry or whatever, right? So he has a friend whose dad is an OB and he was like, call him. So I call uh, his friend's dad and he's an OB and he said, they need to remove that. If you should not be feeling anything. You should not be complaining of pain every single day, especially from doing simple things call them and demand that they take it out. So I called and I said, I want this out. And they heard it, I guess, in my voice. I wasn't probably advocating myself, advocating for myself as much as I should have when I called the previous times, because I feel like we're very submissive sometimes when it comes to doctors. Not anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, now, I hear you. But <laughs> <laughs> back then, like, I felt like I have, they know better, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I guess because she was a female doctor, I, I thought like she obviously she knows and all that. And um, and I'm not taking cre credit away from them, right? But not every person, not every patient is the same. And you need to listen like to that specific concern. So I demanded to have an appointment to have it removed. So I got an appointment, I went to see them and they, uh, had an ultrasound and, and she said oh it looks like you had a little cyst that probably like uh, what is it ruptured and made the pain worse so let's take it out since you want it out taking it out was terrible I don't know if that was your experience but I think it hurt more than printed but like when they started it at first it hurt so much and when she took it out she was like oh you're right it's not it's not how it's supposed to look it, it bent it, it wasn't placed correctly oh you know so gosh. this whole time it was not right it, i was in pain and uh it probably like i know it wasn't for me you know and it probably shouldn't be for many females out there mm -hmm. so i felt so relieved and that was uh june of sorry that was sometime 2018 and close to the, maybe October or so 2018 and my husband and I had the talk and said we're not ready for children he was ready to have children before I was but we just took different alternatives like no birth control for me to take because of my mental health my health in general the fitness goals that I had at the moment and um for a relationship too, you know, because I was, I had like anxiety and psycho moments at times. Mm -hmm. So I haven't felt better, honestly, and since since not having to take anything like that. And we so didn't get pregnant. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to ask. So how did you, how do you feel like your hormones balanced or changed after you got off? Because you went from the pill to having Mirena. And then you went to having nothing and it was probably mm -hmm. your first time ha not being on any hormonal birth control in like a decade yeah. at least. Right. Mm -hmm. And then when it came yeah. out, was it immediate or was it something that you noticed over time? How did you feel? Did the anxiety go away and did you feel more balanced with your hormones? Were you still angry texting? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes the angry texting still happens. I guess it's part of really <laughs> being married. Sometimes. We got to be real, right? <laughs> yes. But I mean, I felt like training wise, I felt like I was finally seeing results in the, with my nutrition, like dialing my nutrition, doing the things that I need, I knew I needed to do. Um, mood wise, I felt so relieved. I don't know if it was psychological, psychologically, psychological, mm -hmm. um, but I felt so relieved that I didn't have to depend on something to control my hormones. And emotionally, 
I felt more at ease. And I think it was um, immediate because I was not in pain. And I felt that was the answer to a lot of my questions of uh, why am I feeling so much anxiety? Do I still have anxiety sometimes? Yes, because of life, you know, but mm -hmm. I can I can say, okay, I'm feeling anxious because of this instead of saying, I don't know why I'm feeling this way. It's coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, like this rush of uh, anxiety that I couldn't explain why it was happening, you know? Sure. And if I start feeling worried or, or having anxiety for whatever reason because of life, you know, I can't say why it's happening, you know, mm -hmm. like, like maybe yeah. it's because I don't know, the dogs are barking or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something's like going that. on, or maybe you had too much caffeine that day or whatever yeah. the case might be. It's interesting because I noticed this with my last pregnancy that I started to have swelling at the end and I cut caffeine out and I'm not even a big caffeine person anyway. I don't drink coffee every day. But just the simple act of drinking coffee for me, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. It makes me feel like a little anxious in my chest, right? So if something mm -hmm. as small as squeezing a couple of beans can make you feel anxious. Imagine what taking synthetic hormones, having them inside of your body every day is going to do. And then eliminating that, it, it's kind of that same thing. It's like you're washing your body of yes. whatever the effects of what you're taking are. And I think that that's, this is why we want to have this conversation, right? It's just so that women think about what it is that we're putting inside our bodies, whether it is food, caffeine, coffee, or birth control, because it mm -hmm. does change our bodies. God designed our hormones and our hormonal system in a very complex way. We have yeah. all sorts of hormones that are shooting off because of different things. And we mm -hmm. know that stress hormones from things like the dogs barking or babies crying or whatever the case might be, that changes our bodies too. And yeah. we go into this kind of fight or flight, or we feel we're feeling anxious. And then we realize sometimes in those moments when we just stop and we go, wait, thank you God for these gifts. And we can step back and we're able to get those, you know, get control of our nervous system. It's hard to control your nervous system when you're not in control of your nervous yes. system, right? Meaning we have synthetic pharmaceuticals inside of us. It's kind of hard to, you can't control that. They're doing whatever they're doing. And it's an in. amazing piece when we don't have that to worry about, right? Yes, <laughs> yes I agree. And um, I think it, that was because I had re like thought about what, what I was doing. I knew that was the answer, right? Or I was hoping that will be the answer. And when it stopped, like I took the the uh, idea out and all that, I felt very relieved. But then mm -hmm. I did see the results. You know, I saw that I had, I had more control and it was my responsibility. And this was before I started uh, coaching uh, mostly females. It was my responsibility to learn my cycle. It was my responsibility to learn my body and not let something a pill or something determine what I was supposed to do right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a lot of uh a lot of probably females feel that fear like I have to learn my body I have to do all learn all this knowledge learn all these things that I have no idea of because I have let the pill control my cycle and my life or since I was 16 17 years old and I know the little girls that started like at 13 14 years old you know in to me, now that I am, I have found Jesus and we have found Christ in our lives, to me, I feel, and it, this is not to judge anybody, but if your main worry is to get pregnant from a random dude, you have other worries <laughs> bigger than just the pill, you know? So to me, like control yeah. your, um, learn your body, learn learn what what's causing certain things. And I've seen this with with my clients like they are doing everything they're supposed to be doing but the moment I know they're in birth control I know we're going to have certain struggles I know they're going to experience more um weird cravings I know they're going to feel more bloated I know they're, they're probably not going to see results as fast as they want and 
it's I I do tell them what my view is, my experience. But at the end of the day, it's your personal choice, like you said, is like, um, you know what what did you say? Free consent. Well, yeah, you... inf- informed consent. Informed to consent. be informed yes. of yes. before you consent to something, be informed about what it is that you are agreeing to, and mm-hmm. you know we could even say we were informed because we were told oh, there might be side effects, read the insert. But that's not true informed consent. Mm -hmm. Informed consent Mm -hmm. is listening to stories like this, listening to what is happening to real women out there. There are so many Facebook groups about Mm -hmm. healing from birth control. That is an indication. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know, I'm taking this specific birth control, look it up because there's probably a group for you. I experienced copper toxicity and I share that in the last episode and I came across a copper toxicity Facebook group. There's 15,000 women in that group that have experienced copper toxicity. And that's not all of us, right? That's just the ones that sought to, you know, seek other people that That went through that experience, (laughs) right? And then there's groups for Mirena specifically too, because Mirena is not made out of copper. It's made of its own nasty stuff. So there are going to be people out there that are going through what you're going through. So if you are having, having a poor experience with birth control and this is running through your mind and and you're saying like, I I've had a similar experience too. You're in the right place. You're listening to real stories of women's experiences. Don't let the medical system gaslight you. That is the, my, my biggest pet peeve about these IUDs is just like in your story, when you said you called and told them what was going on, they said, Oh, just give it time. Mm -hmm. Just give it time. This is what the medical system does. The same thing happened to me. I got Mirena in. I experienced acne. I have never had skin problems in my life. I was breaking out everywhere. I felt nuts. And I called, same thing. I'm like, I I want to get this out. This is not for me. And they said, she said, oh, just give it a couple months. Your hormones need to adjust. And she acts like it, she acted like it was my hormones that were needing to adjust. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, my, my actual hormones were being suppressed and manipulated. They weren't adjusting my hormones. They were ruining my hormones. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for us to be informed about these side effects. I also, I want to talk about the technicality, the specifics of your IUD also being bent and you feeling things when you are bending or moving. I think something that people don't realize or think about is that our uterus is teeny, 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 weeny, tiny when there's not a baby in there. It's very small. It expands a ton to accommodate the baby because it is a muscle that grows. But when there's no baby in the uterus, it's super small. So when you put this foreign object inside of a uterus, it inflames the uterus. And that yes. is part of the reason why it is painful because you're experience, experiencing inflammation And a lot of women don't realize that that's why they retain weight when they have an IUD because it doesn't stay localized in the uterus where the inflammation is occurring. You can have inflammation in other parts of your body too, especially with the Mm -hmm. copper one. But I have heard stories about these IUDs perforating the uterus. So poking through it because it has pointy edges on it. In my case, it grew into my uterine wall. My Mirena was embedded to my uterine wall, meaning it grew into it. And when they went to go remove it, they couldn't because it had forged into the side of my uterus and they had to scrape it out. I mean, does that seem like something that God intended for us to do? Cause that's the argument that I hear from a lot of Christians is like, well, you know, God created medicine because he created us humans to figure these things out. And I agree in, in some senses that God did create us to be inventive and and have ingenuity and create things that will improve life. But when it comes to his design, the human body, we were created in God's image Mm -hmm. and taking a piece of plastic wrapped in synthetic hormones and shoving it inside of an organ. I don't know. I don't think that that was part of his design, but that is my personal opinion. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think, 
our bodies, uh, male and female, but a female body, the female body is so it's nothing can compare to it, obviously, from our periods yeah. to be being able to have babies and birth babies and just be wired the way we are wired, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think, um, and not to get too, too controversial, but I feel it's a way of controlling what we need to know, you know, do you need to know your cycle? You know, do you need Amen, to control that or sister. do we need to control that? <laughs> you are spot on. So that is the biggest piece of this that I personally have learned is when I took birth control as a teenager, what did that mean? That meant I was depending on a pill to regulate my, regulate, doesn't really, regulate my hormones and my period. And it takes care of everything. So I don't have to know anything about how my body works. I don't have to know anything about my fertility, about my uterus, mm -hmm. about my fallopian tubes. I don't need to know anything, right? I can just trust this pill. So you're right. We give away our knowledge. We give away our ability to learn about our bodies. And I want to mention some resources here. I've mentioned these in the past, but there is a wonderful book called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. If you are a mother of a, a daughter who is about to go through her, her period, get her period or whatever, that's when I would start doing this. I would not wait until she's 20. Start now. If you've got a 12, 13 year old, even younger. I mean, I teach my four-year-old about the ovaries and the fallopian too, but you know, I'm kind of a freak in that way, <laughs> <laughs> but it's because of what I went through, right? Taking charge yeah. of your fertility explains how the body works, how the female reproductive system works. It does talk about the male's reproductive system too. There's also another book that's called the fifth vital sign. It's a newer book. So it's shorter kind of more to, to the point. But what I like about taking charge of your fertility is that it's been around for over 20 years. We've known this stuff for a long time because this is how God created our bodies on a clock, on a cycle. And when we know how it works, man, what happens to us? There is a power mm -hmm. that is there. We are empowered when it comes to our own bodies that we don't need yeah. pharmaceuticals. And so you're right. Mm -hmm. It's a trick. <laughs> don't learn about your body. Just take the pill. Don't work. Don't learn about yeah. your body. Just take a shot. Just put a IUD in there. Just plug it up. Don't learn anything. Anyway, yeah, I think I'm, I'm on a um, rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I agree. I feel like the older you get, and I think becoming a mom helps you like even be more aware of these things, right? Um, but uh, I think a lot of the fears that I hear from uh, all family members and uh, clients and even myself back then was like I don't want to get pregnant right and it, I was still married obviously but I wasn't ready mm -hmm. but what we did and I won't go into the details of you know how we prevented it <laughs> but what we did was we talked about it you know he uh Josh Josh my husband was like you I don't want you taking that even him as a male knew that it wasn't right, right? Yep. And in a way, probably his military background, I, <laughs> he probably doesn't trust a lot of things. I don't blame know? him. Yep, they yeah. shoot the military up with a lot of stuff. Yes, so I think he had a lot to do with that and still a lot of things that uh, the way he is, it has a lot to do with that, right? But even him as a male, seeing me struggle with things, he was like, this is birth control, stop it, right? So I listened to him. Once he watches this, he'll be proud. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped it, and we didn't get pregnant. I stopped in June, and maybe I want to mention this because a lot of females probably are going to be like, okay, so you've been having babies after babies. No, it has not been that way. We talked about it. It was a discussion that we had, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to prevent this? And I wasn't ready to have children yet. And he, mm -hmm. he's been ready way before I was. And this was 2018. And we didn't plan to get pregnant until about June of 2019. So okay. almost like a year, I didn't get pregnant. 
not like by accident. Like I learned, you know, when I was supposed to get my period, I didn't use a fancy app or anything. I just knew like how many days in between encountered nothing fancy. June 2019, we decided to try to have babies and I didn't get pregnant until probably September. So, okay. and I so know a couple that's months. probably, yeah, that's probably fast for some people, but we had to actually like make that decision, you know, like mm-hmm. make the decision to make it happen, right? Sure. Make the decision to open, open the gates. <laughs> yes. Gates and closed. It was, <laughs> yes. And before then was like, we're not having children, you know, mm-hmm. we are going to wait. And, and whenever we made that decision, it happened. And then the sec- this pregnancy right now. Carson was born 2021, June 2021. We didn't decide to get pregnant again until 2023. So that shows you almost two years of I wasn't on birth control in between Carson and this pregnancy. If you have that conversation with your partner, if you know your cycle, if you take ownership of your life in this way, you're most likely you're not going to get pregnant right away. It takes a lot to get pregnant it takes a lot to uh, for a lot of women it takes years you know I had mm-hmm. a client she came off birth control it, she went through a lot of heart heartache and I believe it was because of the of the uh, birth control she was in you know it affected her uterine lining a lot the doctor mentioned it to her and like she went through a lot of heartache unfortunately and I see this a lot you know so I'm mm-hmm. like when I feel when I have somebody a new client that tells me she's not on birth control, honestly, I am in a little bit in, in a big way relieved because mm-hmm. I know it's gonna save a lot of heartache in yeah. the future. <laughs> yeah, that's a hurdle that she's that woman is not gonna have to jump through as many as those that are on birth control. Well, yeah. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but you just you just <laughs> mentioned it, just caught on. Andrea is pregnant right now. <laughs> so we were just I was just joking with her. She's going to have to come back and share more about birth stuff after baby, but (laughs) we'll get there. (laughs) So that's a very exciting thing. And yes, you mentioned you and I had a similar experience with our first babies too. So Mm -hmm. there's lots to talk about from the birth realm, (laughs) but I, um, you had another kind of thought that you were making me think about when, when you mentioned, what was it? just now when you were mentioning, oh, not getting pregnant. And I think that there's a misconception out there that we can just get pregnant any day of the month that like any day you can get pregnant, but that is false information. We get pregnant when we are ovulating, when we are going through that phase of our cycle. And it technically is only six days out of the whole Mm -hmm. month. So for six days, you are fertile. And then for the rest of it, you are not. And that is what you'll learn in books like Taking Charge of Your Fertility and The Fifth Sign is they explain that cycle. And that's one of the things you mentioned that you were able to know when you were, your fertile window was so that you could avoid, mm-hmm. you know, the seeds being planted during that time for a number, you know, for, for however long until you guys felt convicted and ready to have your baby. And I went through the same thing, right? We used FAM to prevent pregnancy and we've used FAM to attempt pregnancy. Now, I, it's funny that I even say I used FAM because it's not a guarantee that you're going to get pregnant ever. Like we're not guaranteed baby. None of us. Children are a blessing. And like you said, some people, it takes a long time. Some people, it takes the first time that they're going through ovulation It depends on the person, but we are seeing more and more and more an increased, increased infertility and birth control definitely plays a role. It's on the insert. So y'all go read the insert that birth control can cause future infertility. This was actually a tremendous fear that I had when I got off of all this stuff and I started to learn, I was terrified that I would be infertile because of all the stuff that I was on for all those years. And I mean, technically I'm still not out of the woods, right? Like there's things that these pills and products could have done to my body that I may have to face the consequences of later. And, you know, I try not to live in a state of fear or worry, but I'm just trying to be realistic that 
you know, I made this choice to do, to take these things. And so it's important to be aware that just because we don't experience it now, you know, doesn't mean that we're in the clear. And again, this is not to create fear or cause anxiety, but I, we have to, we have to be truthful about the facts that are in front of us. When we look at these inserts and we look at these papers and what they have said that other women have reported, because that's the side effects that are on the insert are what have been reported. There might even be stuff that hasn't been reported yet. When I had my experience with Morena, I called them and I reported what happened to me. But oh, how many okay. times do we report medication side effects? I don't, I, I think that was the first mine. time. <laughs> yeah. You didn't re you didn't report yours. And I should now that I think about it. Yeah. Call them up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's how I felt. It was such a bad experience, but think about it. It's like a bad review, right? Like you have to go out of your way to leave a bad review. You have to go out yeah. of your way to call this phone number and say, I had a bad experience. Here's what it was. So not everyone's going to do that. And that's where they get this information from. So I guess I, I'm saying if you're listening and you've had an experience like this, call, report your symptoms because that's how they know what is, is going on. That's how they know mm -hmm. what's happening. But this has been super helpful. Thank you for sharing your story. Is there any last pieces that you would like to leave our audience with or any last thoughts? or encouragement less thoughts um, or encouragement so um like i was saying uh, you know we're not giving medical advice this is personal experience and you know what i experienced myself with birth control and um and the uh, mirena and then you know now that i do this world living like coach women with fitness and nutrition i see it also happening to them but I will never say get off of it. You know, it's it's your decision. But always take, do not only take the, always ask your doctor. But also do not take that the, that opinion and that advice as the only thing. Like you mentioned, um, like food for thought, right? If you hear somebody saying they had a negative experience or they are seeing negative experiences with clients or with themselves go look it up, go talk to other women, go ask them questions because the doctor is not probably living that reality every day. You know, that doctor, yeah. especially if it's a male doctor, he's not living that reality. And even if it's a female doctor, she's not living your reality. So if you have questions, if you're questioning a product, if you're questioning a medicine, just go ask um you know do more research read about it do not just take one somebody's word for it or that uh, medical advice as the only route for for your for your fertility for your hormone health and anything that you do so just just talk to people <laughs> absolutely i totally agree with that and the last thing that i would add is also pray for discernment from the Lord. If you are feeling convicted about, if you've been taking birth control for 15 years, it's, the Lord is there. He is there for us. He is our rock and he will guide us to the answers that are right for us and our bodies. And I lived in a lot of years of guilt over this and just feeling a certain kind of way, but I have peace now from the Lord through this. So I just encourage anybody to pray for that discernment. Lord, is this the path that you have for me? Is this right for me? And then listen when he speaks to you, because it's mm -hmm. easy for us to ignore that and say like my whole, everything inside of me, my intuition and the Holy spirit are screaming to not mm -hmm. do this. Listen, listen. <laughs> so that's my that gut feeling. <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's, it's probably God telling you stop and think and talk to people. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and being on the podcast. I am looking forward to us doing this again. No, thank you so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun and I'm glad to finally meet you, you know, hopefully <laughs> one day in person. <laughs> I know, right? I am too. I am too. And to find Andrea on Instagram, her uh, handle or profile is at Andrea underscore Rio Frio underscore Halford. 
And I will also link it in the show notes so that you can find her. Definitely go and check her out. She has awesome stuff for women on fitness and recovering postpartum, but also preparing before baby. I love watching your videos. You're so inspiring. So definitely go to the show notes and grab more information. And thank you for tuning in and for being on this journey with us. If you'd like to follow along outside of this podcast, you can join the mission on Instagram or Facebook at The Radiant Mission or on YouTube. You can watch this on YouTube if you're not already. Just search The Radiant Mission or my name, Rebecca Toomey. And today we are going to close with Andrea's favorite Bible verse, Matthew 6, 27. She feels, when she feels worried, this verse reminds her to let God do his job. Matthew 6, 27 reads, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? That is so true. We will not. Hey, I, I'm going to add another quote to this. Worry is like a rocking chair. It'll give you something to do, but you won't get anywhere. And I think that's what the oh, Lord yeah. is saying. <laughs> yeah, that's so, true. Right. <laughs> we are wishing you a radiant week and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.